Here we are on a Wurlitzer 200 model. We're dealing with a strike line of the hammers. Um, if you have a weak treble end, you might want to uh, address the strike line. This note is actually not too bad, but in comparison to the other notes up here, we feel that it needs to be adjusted. So we're going to show you how to adjust the strike line of a hammer. Okay, in order to adjust the strike line, the first thing you're going to want to do is to remove the hammer. So you go in through the dampers with a screwdriver, a thin flathead, loosen or remove the screw, Twist the hammer and pull it out. Okay, now that we have the hammer up, first we'll show you what a strike line actually is. The strike line is where the hammer comes up and hits the tone generator, which is a reed in the case of a Wurlitzer. So, on your Wurlitzer, you'll notice uh, on the treble end that the uh, hammers might hit the reeds at different spots. Um, you particularly want to make note of reeds that sound good and reeds that don't and observe where the hammer is striking the reed underneath. Um, so this is how you'll set your, your, your strike line by manipulating the hammer um, and where it hits the reed. So we're going to show you how to change that strike line. What you're going to do is you're going to burnish the glue inside the um, hammer butt and the hammer itself. And you're going to adjust the angle at which it sits inside the hammer butt. Now whether it's too far front of the reed or too far back of the reed, this is how you'll make your adjustment. You'll predetermine that before you start moving it by, by observing uh, what we just showed you first of all. Alright, okay let's put it back in now and see how that works. When putting the hammer back in, it's best to have two hands because you have to put it in sideways and then twist it upwards. And at the same time, there's a fly from the whip assembly that you have to set into the hammer butt, into the catcher of the hammer butt. So you basically have to trip that fly a little bit so it fits inside the hammer butt catcher. Once that's in place, you can tighten the screw down. So we change that that hammer positioning. I'll point to where the hammer position changed. Okay. Great. Okay, the 
this is the hammer butt, this is the fly, and this opening inside the hammer butt is the catcher. This is what I was talking about when I was saying you had to get the fly inside the catcher and then trip it so it sits in there. Because if you put the hammer in and it doesn't go inside this, the fly doesn't go inside the catcher, it's not going to sit inside there properly. So you want to make sure that you trip it by tripping the whip assembly down here by pushing this forward so that the hammer butt and catcher fall onto the fly. Um, while we're here, this is also the distance between this fly <clears throat> and the top of the catcher, this buckskin felt up here, is your is your um, lost motion. You you want um, one thirty seconds of an inch between the fly and the top of the catcher. This is um, the distance you need because if if you don't have that when you go to press a key what's going to happen is is that the hammer is not going to come back all the way it's going to sit on the top of there and you'll see that the hammer is not sitting on the rail properly so without that distance without that gap at the top that hammer is not going to fall back in place properly especially on slow triggered runs when you're playing you can see if you push it slowly, it almost trips itself on top without falling back freely. This needs to, we need to add about a sixteenth, and thirty second of an inch more gap, and that and that's achieved by lowering the capstan. All right, so that's a little um, diagram of the anatomy of the Whirlister, just so you get an idea of what you're doing when you replace a hammer and you're making your setups.